Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome to the third edition of the Jetta Podcast. I'm joined by my co-host Anthony, aka Jets Wire. How's it going, man? What's up, guys? Um, ready to talk some Jets. Now, you guys might notice that it's only us two this time. So both of our our two other co-hosts, uh, Charlie Morrow, Morrow. I don't know how you pronounce it. <laughs> Nobody really does. I can't even say his last name either. And uh, Jets Rebellion. And, yeah, they're both not here today because of how late it is. Um, but we still wanted to put on the show. I know we didn't do it on Wednesday and Friday. That's because I want to address something real quick for you guys. Um, me and Anthony have talked about it as well as Charlie. We're going to be pushing the shows to Mondays and Thursdays. And occasionally we'll we'll switch between Thursdays and Fridays. Occasionally. But this week we expected to have on Friday, though. Yeah, this week is probably going to be on Friday, yeah. but I want to say uh, half the time it's going to be on Thursday as well. So yeah. anyways, yeah, uh, we're sorry that we weren't here the last couple of times, but and this you're probably going to be seeing this episode on both of our channels on Tuesday, but that's because we're recording on Monday night and um, it's probably going to be midnight when we finish this. So uh, that's why you have anything to say. Oh, um, nothing really. I'm ready to talk anything when you're ready to go. All right, so let's start off with our first topic of the day. Uh, break down or give me some of your takeaways from Robert Sala's introductory. I press think it was a really good one. It was just really nice just seeing uh, the, the 28th head coach in the New York Jets get introduced in a hire that re- Jet fans really, really like. And it was actually like a normal press conference this time because – uh, obviously, his eyes weren't going crazy like Adam Gase's were two years ago. So at least it was a normal press conference, and we're actually fine with the guy this time. So I'm just really happy. I, I'm so happy. Robert Tall is our head coach. So what about you? Yeah, I mean, and one thing I want to point out, all gas, no breaks, bro. If that doesn't make you want to run through a wall for, like, your head coach, I don't know what will. That's just – Man, I, I'm already, like, I'm getting hyped watching him talk in the press conference, man. He makes dudes want to go to war for him. He's a great leader. Uh, he's also a pretty good mentor and knows how to develop players, yeah. as well as a phenomenal defensive mind. And this time we're not getting the next Wayne Gretzky. So yep. I think it's something that we should hang our hats on. Yeah, It's just, if, it, if you're a Jets fan right now, you're feeling really good about the head coach. Yep. So moving on to number two, Jeff Ulbridge or Ulbrich was named our defensive coordinator during the press conference. What do you have to say about this one? Um, um, I'm don't I don't really know him that much, but I've heard some really good stuff about him before. Um, apparently, um, so when Dan Quinn was still the head coach of the Falcons, they were they were giving up like. They had 30 plus points a game, but then when Obridge got uh when he when he went into the defensive coordinator job and he was calling the plays and all that, it appears they they were only giving up about 23 point points per game. So as an av- as an average. So so he's he's gonna be the play caller for defense. Uh Robert Sala, he's gonna be just caring about the whole team. He'll be coaching the whole team. He won't be – he's not like Rex Ryan and all those guys that just cared about one side of the ball and Adam Gase. So, that's a good thing to realize that you got a coach that care doesn't just care about one side of the ball that cares about the whole team. So, what about you? Yeah, I mean, I'll be 100% honest with you guys. I don't know a lot about Jeff Obridge. All I know is that he was the interim D.C., I believe, in Atlanta yep. uh, under head, uh, interim head coach Raheem Morris. And during that time period, the Falcons went from giving up around 35 points and 350 yards a game to only 24.3 points and I think 284 yards per game. Now, that doesn't sound so impressive, but if you have the offense that, like, let's say, and uh, this is going to really foreshadow what we're doing later with the show, you have the Sean Watson on your team with uh, a kind of offense the Jets can put around him. You won't need to – or you can give up 284 yards a game and be perfectly fine. I mean, and also when you look at it too, who is really on Atlanta? Like, 
name some defensive players you know there, like AJ Terrell, Keanu Neal. Yeah, there's not, there's not yeah, exactly. There's not really that's the good thing. And he's gonna have more defensive players to work with on this Jets team because obviously you have guys with potential with they're young and they have a lot of potential going into next year. Guys like Quinn Williams, John Franklin Myers, Foley, uh Fekutoski. You got all these guys, and I think their potential is going to actually be unlocked with these this new coaching staff that's coming in. So I'm excited. Yeah, I agree. And that will segue into our next topic and our final topic about uh, what Robert Sala went through in this press conference is that the Jets seem to stay non-committal to Sam Darnold. What do you think about that? Uh, they just don't really want to like say anything in the media or anything like that, but. From with them refusing to answer those kind of questions, it's kind of making me think that he's not going to be on this team next year. That's a little bit because they, 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 they've been – like, it's not even just solid. It happened to Douglas after the season ended. He got asked a million questions about Sam Donald. He answered about all of the other players. Hold on, Anthony. Uh, you just went – your mic went muted for, like, about 10 seconds. Uh, a technical, technical difficulty that happens about once in the show. So just repeat what you were saying up to like 20 seconds ago. As soon as your mic comes back on, because so, um, sorry, internet connection, um, internet charge was actually on. Well, what about you? All right, so once again, guys, Josh Rosen is our guy, Jamal Adams, Jeff for life, and. You even see Joe Douglas. All right, in the uh, in conferences earlier this year, he would say, or he would be asked about players like, uh, "Is Marcus May a part of the future?" He said, "I think Marcus May is uh, is one of the main, or one of the main things that we're gonna have to do this offseason. We're gonna have to retain him." Quinn Williams, he's a uh, he's a stud. We're not gonna trade him. He's gonna be a very good player for this team. Sam Darnold, hey, the weather's outside today, isn't it? Or the weather's nice outside today, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. They just don't answer questions about Sam. Why is that? Because they don't want to portray that they don't trust him. They don't want to show. Because if you do, if you show that you don't want this guy as your quarterback, his trade value drops. If you don't answer the question and you say that you're just doing your due diligence on all of the candidates, in reality, the trade value goes up because teams are going to be like, okay, we have to give up a little more to like convince them to actually move on from him. And I think that's a very smart organizational thing to do. Um, and another thing to say, Sam's not going to be here next year. All the Sam fanboys. Yeah. I love Darnold. He's a great kid. I think he's going to have success uh, elsewhere, but he's not going to be here next year. He's not going to be in New York yet. What we're hearing is no, there's no way. There's, there's no way he's going to be here. Nobody can say, I can't see it. No, you can't see it. No real Jeppin out there can see it at this point. So. Yeah, I can't, I can't really see it. Yeah, I'm having a very hard time seeing it, but one thing that I know we both could see is Allen Robinson going on Twitter, liking some tweets about Deshaun Watson and the Jets. <laughs> yeah, Richard Sherman did it too. And, you know, so did Deshaun Watson about Deshaun Watson going to the Jets. So maybe the three want to unite together in New York. I would love to see it, man. But what do you think? What do you think? You want, you want to see it happen? Yes, of, of course. But like, the thing is, if you're if you're the Jet, if you're the New York Jets right now, and you want something like this to happen, you're gonna have to take some pay cuts with a lot of players, though. Yeah, I think what you're gonna have to see is something like uh, if you're a basketball fan, the Golden State Warriors a couple of years ago to keep a, together that team, Kevin Durant had to take a significant pay cut and not take a max contract so that Steph Curry could get the super yep. max that he got. So. Which, Kept together that super team. I, I would love the possibility of it. Oh my God, would immediately be a top 12, top 10 offense. You got a top five quarterback. I think he's the third best quarterback in the league. You know, yeah, I, think, I think he's talented. He's more talented than some quarterbacks like Josh Allen. Like, I, I think Josh Allen just has a better team around him. I think Deshaun Watson's actually better, though. But jo you've seen Josh Allen do more things because. He's a better team around him, in my opinion. And if you give Watson more than he has, then he's gonna he's gonna be a guy that can throw possibly forty plus touchdowns. Yeah, and so you got the Sean Watson, your unarguably top five quarterback. 
Allen Robinson, unarguably a top 10 wide receiver. Richard Sherman, a great veteran presence, even if he doesn't play good. He's had success in the past, so there's always that you can look at. And he's a great guy, once again, for the locker room. I love the possibility of it happening, but do nope. you think it's a real possibility? I think it's a good chance because his coach is here now, so I, I can really see it in a, in a way. I can see it. I would love to see it. We're just going to see. We're going to see what Douglas wants to do. Yeah, and the rumors were that Deshaun Watson, uh, one of his main candidates that the te- he wanted the Texans to bring in was Robert Sala. I hear that he's intrigued by Robert Sala. I, th- I hear that uh, he wants to play under him. I hear that he thinks he's going to be a very successful head coach, so that could be a bargaining chip for the Jets, maybe to get Deshaun Watson to wave that no-trade clause in the Jets' direction. And he can fix Mike McCagden's mistake back in 2017. And that would that would be great. And we get right there. We're just gonna we're just to let you know, Jeff and we're gonna hear a lot of stuff the next few weeks and the next few days. So we're gonna hear a lot if we're not if we're gonna trade for him or we're not gonna trade for him. We're gonna see. Speaking about that 2017 draft class, I want you to tell uh say real quick, who did you want with that sixth overall pick that year? You hear me? Um I I that year I wanted either Watson or Mahomes that year. I was thinking I was thinking Watson though. I really oh, I wanted Watson so bad. You don't even know. I wanted Watson on the New York Jets so bad. Almost happened. Yeah, you already expected us to draft some quarterback. Dude, Watson. Cagnan so was an idiot. Yo, all right, so I want you guys to comment down below in the chat. Um, do you think you would be a better – or comment down below in the comments. Do you think you'd be a better general manager than Mike McCagnon? <laughs> he hasn't got a job ever since the Jets fired him. I think I would, yeah, because this, this team has gone in a different direction ever since we fired him. Well, I actually, I won't say that. We did have Adam Gase for two years, but yep. – that's besides the point. Going to our Even next topic. We should have fired Gase instead of McCagney at that point. I honestly would rather have the Gase for the two years than McCagney. Yeah. Actually, two. yeah, you're right. Because then we would have never had. I would yeah, never be wearing no, the shirt. Gase, Gase could have been fired before we even coached a game. True. We should have fired both. A lot of you know this. Um, apparently, um. They, you know this because Adam Gase. A lot of people got Adam got on Adam Gase a lot was because of his arrogance and stuff like that. Apparently, he never really wanted Le'Veon Bell on the team, and then he got mad at McCagnan for signing him, and then it was like a little power struggle. Adam Gase wanted over McCagnan. That's literally yeah. what it was. I I think he didn't want mostly on that big a deal either. Bro, he's I think, bro, I told you, I told yeah, you, guys, day one, he's an arrogant prick. But he has a point. Yeah, I give credit where credit is due. He had a point. I wasn't. I loved the Bell signing at the time, but this is gonna sound stupid. I'd rather have Tevin Coleman. I, I said I'd rather have Tevin. At Coleman. this point, yeah, I agree. And at this point as well, like when even in that off season, I was like, man, Tevin Coleman is a beast. I want us to sign him. He's my guy. Hmm. But so going into our next topic, topic number five, uh, what would be as of right now your trade proposal to the Texans? For, uh, for Deshaun Watson or in exchange for Deshaun. Okay. Um, that's what I offer. Anything, this is what I would offer. All right. Second overall pick. Uh, a, t- um, the t- a 2022 first round pick. A second round pick. And Sam Donald for Deshaun Watson and we get a fifth round pick. All right. So repeat that and break it down for me. So assets. two first. I, I would like to see if the Jets can get Watson in a way with two first round picks. Um, a second round pick, and Sam Darnold for Deshaun Watson and a fifth round pick. That's what I would offer. I would see if the tech. But if they say no, I I would give them a 2023 first round pick. Yeah, I think where I would go with this is I would give the number two pick this year. Pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, you're, you're giving out, if you're trading for Watson, you're 100% giving them the second overall pick. Yeah, I mean, you really have to give them the second overall pick just to give them their choice of who they want as their quarterback for the future. Is it Zach Wilson 
Um, but don't have. But what if they have Sam Darnold though? No, that's the yeah. interesting thing. I don't so think. What I heard. What I heard today is that whoever trade if if it's either the Dolphins or the or the uh, Jets that are trading for Watson, either Tua or Darnold are going to be in the deal. That's what I heard today. That would be interesting, but I still. What what I heard? I don't. Unless those rumors are true, I don't really see a way that the Texans would want either in a deal. Um, yeah. So I would go that second overall pick so they can get a quarterback. Then you have our 2022 uh, first round pick. So our first round pick next year. Then our first round pick in 2023. And I would throw in there to just spice the deal up a little bit and just make it over the top. Our sixty six, our sixty six overall pick this year because we already have another third. Uh, we have another third round pick in that class, and this also gives us. The, the Jets think they can get a first round pick for Sam. Okay, ship Sam to maybe New Orleans for their first. You still have two firsts this year. You still have your second, and you have a third, so you're you're perfectly fine. Uh, the only real loss that you have is in twenty twenty three, which if you're trading for Watson, I would assume by that point you're already in Super Bowl contention. I like it. So. So with our sixth topic, and uh, I know this is both of our favorites, I think. List your top three under the radar free agents that the Jets this year. All right. Coming in at um, my, my favorite one, uh, Corey Davis, Tennessee Titans wide receiver. In my opinion here, this is one of the most underrated wide receivers in the NFL. Corey did, and and my a big reason why I picked this was because I think he's a he's a Joe Douglas type guy out there. This is a guy you can get cheap, and he can do special things for your team. He did he did he even get the ball that much with Tennessee this year, and he had like over nine hundred fifty yards. Yeah, I think he only got around fifty to sixty catches this year. Exactly, exactly. A, Ryan Tannehill the whole year was throwing it to AJ Brown half the time, and they ran the ball half the time with Derrick Henry. So, and I think Corey, if we end up don't getting like an Allen Robinson or someone like that, I think Corey Davis would be the right move. So yeah, Davis got uh, had sixty five catches and had around nine hundred fifty yards. So that's fifteen yards per. All right, so if we don't, if we're not able to sell one of those high wide receivers on the market, I think really, I think we should look into Corey Davis, in my opinion. So um, my second favorite coming up is Jamal Williams, Green Bay Packers running back. Obviously, um, so obviously he's the uh, RB two for the Green Bay Packers. Even though he doesn't really get that much playing time with Aaron Jones in front of him. He still, when he's in there, he can he's able to get you a, a decent amount of yards, and he's able to just be a consistent running back out there. And I think if you give him a guy like that enough playing time, I think he can do really special things for your team. So I think he'd be a really good fit for the Jets. And you can get like again, I think he, this is a guy that you can get cheap, in my opinion. So yeah, and then coming in at number three, people are gonna like this. Bud Dupree, Pittsburgh Steelers defensive end. Obviously, the Jets badly. I think the Jets really, really need another pass rusher. And Bud Dupree, he's been one of the best defensive ends in the NFL the last few years. This guy is, if you look at this guy, this guy is a complete monster. He's able to just, just be a consistent player, just just be a really good pass rusher and just do and just be a consistent player. And I think with him and Quentin Williams, I think this defense would just get better and better with really with two really good pass rushers like this. So, yeah. I agree, and I like your picks. So, now I'm going to start off. I have a little bit of an honorable mention that neither of us included, but I think uh, is still noteworthy and should be a guy that the Jets could look at target. Uh, and his name is Keanu Neal, the safety for the Atlanta Falcons. He posted uh, 83 tackles this year, had uh, with one interception on 58 targets and allowed 45 receptions. Now, you look at that and you're like, okay, well, he's not the best cover guy in the world. He's a decent cover guy. He's pretty solid. 
Uh, but man, I think he has a sack this year. He's been really good. He's an amazing tackler. He, as soon as he wraps your arm, uh, as soon as he wraps his arms around the offensive player, dude's going down. You just don't get around him. He can he can rush the passer in uh, limited reps. He's gone to the quarterback quite a bit, and I think in a solid system, a player like Keanu Neal could end up flourishing next to Marcus uh, Marcus May. Hmm. So now for my number three, I have uh, Green Bay Packers running back Jamal Williams, 119 carries for 505 yards, two touchdowns on 4.2 yards per carry. That's not even uh, including his pass game numbers. He didn't have any fumbles this year, which is also a good thing to see. He boasted a uh, 73.2 BFF grade. What does this tell you? As an RB2 for the Packers, he's been very good this year. He's a guy that you could get for cheap. He's a guy that could come in. He would come in and be the best running back in your running back room. Uh, he's put up good production and could end up being, who knows, he could end up being one of the better running backs in the league. Um, as I said earlier, you can get him for cheap. You could bring him in. He doesn't have any character concerns. In fact, he's gotten along well with other players in the rock, locker room, even at his own position, uh, in which he's fighting for a spot on that roster or uh, in that positional group, which is always good to see in a guy, uh, especially a guy that's been a, a role player for most of his career. And now as a free agent, he's 25 years old. I think he's coming off of his rookie deal. He coming to the Jets and maybe he – has a breakout year. You never know. So, yeah, I have Jamal Williams at number three. At number two, 49ers cornerback Akilo Witherspoon. He had 18 tackles, one interception, 28 targets, and 16 receptions allowed. You look at those numbers, and they don't scream lockdown corner by any means at all. But then you look, he has an 80.2 PFF grade. If you don't know what that is, that's like a top 10 corner. That's a better PFF grade than I think Jalen Ramsey had this year. And he's been I starting a lot too. Of the season. Yeah. I mean, just look at this guy. When he plays, he is very inconsistent. I'll give you that. He's young and he'll come in again. He'll come. He's a player that will transfer well because he played with the 49ers under Robert Sala. And now he's going to go back to Robert Sala and play for the Jets, which means, you know, he's going to have that continuity. He's going to, you know, he's not going to get worse. There's only one way to go, and that's up. Now, you sign him to a one-year deal. Once again, a guy you can get for cheap. He's young. And see if he can prove to be a consistent corner in the league. Because, man, he shows flashes of being a lockdown corner. And it's really fun to watch at times. He played well against players like DeAndre Hopkins and DK Metcalf, but got, like, burned over the top by some nobody wide receivers, which I just don't know uh, how you do that. But, you know, if he can become a consistent player, he's going to be a nightmare for opposing wide receivers. So, Akilah Witherspoon at two. And then at number one, Panthers wide receiver, Curtis Samuel. I love this kid, all right? Yeah. 93 receptions or uh, 93 targets for 77 receptions, 851 receiving yards, and three receiving touchdowns. That's a PFF grade of 77. And also, to point out for a slot receiver, that's 11.1 yards per uh, yards per attempt or yards per reception. That's pretty solid. Uh, I think he's he's extremely explosive. He's fast. You can line him up at wildcat formations. He can go in as a running back at times. He could really he could stretch the defense. He can run deep, and he's a pretty good route runner too. So he's all around perfect package for a pretty solid slot wide receiver, and I think he fits well into the, uh, the Kyle Shanahan system, which is going to be brought, brought over here with Matt LaFleur. So you look at the guy that's been the number three receiver this year and has been the number two receiver for most of his career behind DJ Moore. If he comes here, he might arguably be the best wide receiver in the room, and not if we sign a guy like Allen Robinson, obviously, but you look, if we draft a guy like, let's say we get Zach Wilson, okay? I think yeah. Curtis Samuel would really flourish in the system, uh, in Matt LaFleur's system and with his quarterback being Zach Wilson. I think he would have a very solid year. You said Matt LaFleur. It's Mike. 
All right, yeah, it's Michael right. Floor. Uh, my okay. apologies. I know. Yeah, I keep thinking that uh, the Green Bay Packers head coach is our offensive coordinator, man. <laughs> I wish. But, yeah, my, I think he would be pretty good in Michael Floor's system. <laughs> so, yeah, I got Curtis Samuel at one. That rounds out my list. So, Curtis Samuel, Akilah Witherspoon, Jamal Williams, and Keanu Neal. Check all those players out. I think they mm-hmm. could be solid targets for the Jets. But now let's move on to our seventh topic, one of our last topics of the day. Who do you think will be the Jets quarterback in 2021 and why? Um, if – if I were to be so realistic right now, I really think the Jets quarterback next year is going to be BYU quarterback Zach Wilson. It's just – listen to me. I think there's a really good chance the Jets end up trading for Deshaun Watson. But at this point, I can really see just Joe Douglas just building through the just building through the draft, picking Zach Wilson, maybe picking a running back at, at 23. And I just think Zach will – I think – I think the Jets, I think it, it'd be good for them to start off a quarterback like that again. Because then you you can get even more free agents in here, too. You'll be paying Zach Wilson for, like, four years or something like that on his rookie deal. So you won't have to pay so much money. Yeah. And you and got they, that fifth-year option, too. Yeah, and if the kid ends up being the real deal, it's worth paying him all that money then. So I really think – and people talk about this guy being, like, a Patrick Mahomes one day. I think really – I think the Jets should test him out to see how he does. So – Yeah, yeah. my opinion's changed on this. I think the quarterback in 2021 is going to be, uh, uh, like you said, BYU quarterback Zach Wilson. Now, why it's changed is because now I think Zach Wilson is actually better than Justin Fields, and I think he's the number one option that the Jets should pursue this offseason. I don't think we should trade for Deshaun Watson. I think I wouldn't be mad. It's not that – it's not – we're not telling you guys that Deshaun Watson's bad. No, it's just like – It's just so much to give up. Exactly. And when you're building a team, like you already have, you could do Deshaun Watson, sort of shortcut it. Uh, it's I wouldn't call it more risky, but it's definitely some risk factor. If some of your weapons don't pan out, then what are you going to do? Uh, but if you get a, uh, and I think another part of this is Mike McDaniels. I think he's going to want his own rookie quarterback that he can sort of experiment with and bring in and sort of mold him around his scheme. And I like Zach Wilson in this regard. I, I love the Patrick Mahomes comparisons, as you brought up. He's amazing off balance. Like, when you watch him throw on the run, it's just like, oh, man. This dude is just something special. Yep. I would say there's not a lot of uh, areas where he is bad, actually. I don't think there's a single one. Now, his clock management, as far as Zach Wilson goes, uh, there was one play against, I think, Coastal Carolina where he just scrambled the pocket for 11 seconds when there was like seven seconds left uh, in the second quarter and they were in field goal range and then uh, threw it up to his receiver who was short of the end zone by about 15 yards. But aside from that, he's really the complete package. I mean, you're talking about a guy that I can see being better than Trevor Lawrence at the end of the day where I don't think that's going to happen, but it's a real possibility. I wouldn't be surprised. So, yeah, I think it's going to be Zach Wilson. Well, we're just going to see. Maybe maybe Joe Douglas wants Deshaun Watson that bad. He just ends up training for him. But we're just we're going to hear things the next few days. But at the end of the day, I'm going to be happy, whoever our quarterback. If it's going to be Zach Wilson or Deshaun Watson, I'm going to be – I'm still going to be so happy of who our quarterback is going to be going to next year. So Yeah, and to build on that, when people hear – I feel like people like to – when they hear someone not agree with them, they think they're discrediting. No. I would love if we had Deshaun Watson. But we're just, we're, we're going to see, though. We're going to see. Yeah. And I also, I would love Justin Fields. I'm a Buckeyes fan. I would love if Justin Fields is our quarterback. I would love any of these three quarterbacks on the Jets. But at the end of the day, you pick your favorites. You're fine with either of the option, unless we get Trey Lance at two. <laughs> Don't even Why get are you bringing that up as a possibility? I have seen Blake NY Jets and uh, <laughs> NY Jets commentator say that Trey Lance is a possibility at two. I wanted to punch no both of them. Those are my guys, no too. Way. It's just, if we, uh, that might be it for me. Uh, yeah, that might be it for me if we draft Trey Lance at two. <laughs> that might be the tip of the edge. That might be the tip of the iceberg. I might just go um, uh, live a life without the Jets. You never hear from me again. But yeah. I'm fine with Justin Fields. I'm fine with Zach Wilson. I'm fine with Deshaun Watson. I feel like you. Uh, I think you would feel the same way. I feel like a lot of people would feel the same way. 
Hmm. But, you know, when you have the chance to draft who, who arguably is the next Patrick Mahomes, I mean, makes sense. I think you want to do that. Because so, both, both, and there's the similarities. They both didn't go to great colleges where you play great teams, and they, they were both beasts in college. Yeah. So. And you even see, like, Zach Wilson's I even, I even think Zach Wilson. I even think Zach Wilson was better. Yeah, I mean, Patrick Mahomes, like, mechanics and footwork out of college sucked. He just had an amazing arm and great accuracy. It's just yeah. amazing playmaking ability. Zach Wilson is basically what Patrick Mahomes was in the offseason before he took, like, the start against L.A. in that second year. Hmm. He is just – he's like – Patrick Mahomes with a little worse of an arm. And that's not even discrediting it, too, because Patrick Mahomes is the best arm in the league. Yeah. But, like, just look at his fundamentals. It's just fun to watch. And I think it's it's around – it's a lot better than Mahomes was in Texas Tech. So, yeah. you have anything to build on that? Um, yeah, it's just – I really think Zach Wolf's going to – if. If the, if the Jets coaching staff is this good and they, and they they are confident in a quarterback like this, I can really see Zach Wilson end up being a superstar one day. If if we're able if we end up drafting him, I think he can end up being a star one day. So I would really like Zach Wilson on this team. So yeah, and I want to just add a quick thing. Who are uh, give me three Jets players that you would deem as untouchable in a trade for Deshaun Watson. Okay. Quentin Williams. Uh, obviously, Makai back then. And um, what's another player I could put in there? Denzel Mims. Denzel Mims. Denzel, I knew you were going to say, yeah. Those yeah. Are, in my opinion, those are the three guys. Oh, well, there's a lot of free agents on the team, so like I'm not going to include any of those guys in there, like Marcus May. Marcus May is a free agent. Brian Poole is a free agent. All these guys are free agents. So I think those three guys that, you, that we just mentioned, I think there's no way the Jets are going to give them away if we end up getting Deshaun Watson, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm but, sorry. I wouldn't even give up Bryce Hall. All right. <laughs> Mims, you know Mims, man. He's my he's my favorite player on the team. No way we give him up. He's going to be the next Julio Jones. Mark my words. Hopefully. Uh, <laughs> Makai Becton, you don't give him up. He's your franchise left tackle. And Quentin Williams is going to be the next Aaron Donald under – Robert Salas. Oh, hopefully. hopefully. So, you know, it's really looking bright. You just don't th- trade those players away. You don't trade your young core for a quarterback, all right, even if he's Deshaun Watson's level. So, what do you think of that? You don't trade your young core away? Exactly. You don't You don't trade the guys you just drafted. Quentin Williams, he's going into his third year. He, he's coming off a of- Breakout season. You see what Denzel Mims can do. He showed you the Jets showed him some flashes with Sam Darnold playing bad this past year, and you saw Makai Becton just be able to take on the league's best pass rushers, and he's able to just do really good against them. So you can't trade any of those guys at this point. They're early. It's early in their career. You can never trade these guys. These guys are have all three of these guys have really bright futures with this team. You can I trade. I, I, I just don't even have anything to add on to that. That's just – I couldn't word it any better. And, you know, one more thing I want to say. We should probably start doing this. We might have to start doing this podcast, like, every time the Nets play. Because every time we do the podcast, the Nets win on the same day. <laughs> every single time. So, as a Nets fan, we might have to start doing this, like, every day so that the, <laughs> the Nets can win the rest of the games this year and finish – what is it? How many games are we playing this year? Because it's not 75 and 7, but uh, okay. on, 50 or something like that. <laughs> yeah, it might be 50. But that leads us to our last point. Top. <laughs> uh, what are your reactions to the conference championship? Um, it's what I expected. I um I understand people, uh, all the people out there thought the Bucks were gonna win. I mean, the I mean, I mean the Packers were gonna win. But I just saw Tom Brady just going into Lambeau Field and just being able to pull an upset against Green Bay. Yeah. Brady is going to his 10th Super Bowl of his career. One six, he's lost four. But and now, it's not despite us. I know. 
So, and I and I expected that Chief game. I, I did, that's really what I predicted. I really, as good as the Buffalo Bills are, I really just couldn't see them being the Kansas City Chiefs in Kansas City in the AFC Championship. I just really couldn't see it. As good as the Bills are, you, I just couldn't see it at all. So, what about you? Yeah, and as you said, it's what you expected. I know I said the Bills were going to win uh, on Monday, but if you follow my Instagram, you know I picked the Chiefs in that game. So, I'm 2-0. In the, in the last uh, – in the divisional round of the conference championship, I think that combined for about 6-0. and You know, I think that's a pretty solid record. Uh, we're going to forget the wild card round even exists. So, yeah, it's like a, what I expected. I think – the Bills definitely should have put up um, uh, a better fight against the Chiefs. Yep. Which I would, yeah, Josh expect. Allen, Josh Allen, he's just running backwards literally the whole game. Yeah, it was playoff Josh Allen. You throw laterals on like. So um, far. I understand he won two playoff games this year, but still, I don't think he's been that good of a player in the playoffs so far. And I and I love Josh Allen, too. Like, like I love players that can prove good, me wrong time kid. and time again. And that's what Josh Allen's done. I called him. I called him terrible at the beginning of the year. I said he might be. He'd probably be a bust in the NFL. He just proved me wrong time after time again. So respect to him. I grow to like you from bad in college, bad this first year and a half to a MVP candidate. Yeah, I mean that's just respectable. Just like what Brady did to us for 18, 19 years in a row. And so yeah, I definitely thought the Bills should have put up a better fight, but. You got to look at that. Just it could have gone better for the Chiefs because they did end up losing uh, Eric Fisher, which is going to be a really yeah. tough blow. It's going to be a really tough he's blow. One the, he's one of the best yeah. tackles in the NFL. Yeah, uh, one of the he's he's pretty decent, but yeah, ha- not having a left tackle is just going to is really going to hurt. That's literally one. Of, but all in one, all, one of the most. Gotta think of this. Positions on the offensive line, maybe the most important. The Chiefs didn't peak, and I think that is going to really help them because when we look in the NFC Championship game, that was a pretty close game, and it was Rodgers, Brady the whole week. I just think I just think the Packers they they started they started getting something going a little too late, in my opinion. Yeah, it was too late. And by the way, that the call to kick a field goal with Aaron Rodgers when you're on the eight yard line. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I really, really like uh, Matt Lafleur, but what what is he what is he doing? Yeah, sometimes Matt Lafleur, he's one of the best coaches in the NFL. I'm just sorry, like what what is he doing on that play? Please tell yeah, me. Yeah, you fucked that up. You have Aaron Rodgers. You have one of the best quarterbacks that ever lived. In you don't think he can get how what what eight y'all yards. What, eight yards? Eight. You don't think he can throw an eight yard pass to Devontae Adams or whoever? It's ridiculous. I'm not listening. To me. I'm not. It's it's one. It's one time though. It's, but people have been freaking out a little too much over that play though. It's, people have been acting like the floor is a terrible coach now. He's not. He's one of yeah, the best yeah. coaches in the NFL. So you look at the Chiefs game. The Chiefs played very well on defense. The Bills coincidentally played bad on offense, offense as well. Forced their defense the whole game. And, and the Chiefs' offense played well enough to win the game. Uh, and coming back from 9-0 when it looked like the game might have been over for a minute of time, when the Chiefs went up 24-12 to 12 at halftime, I knew the game was over. Yeah, me so too. If you're Buffalo, you needed a lead going into halftime. I just don't think you're coming back in the Chiefs like that. Then we have Brady versus Rodgers, in my opinion, the two best quarterbacks to ever live. Tom Brady showed out. Uh, no Antonio Brown, Chris Godwin, a non-factor. Mike Evans being one of the worst receivers in the league uh, the last two games. It's just that's what you have to do to win playoff games. Their defense played well. Tom Brady showed out for a while, and then in the fourth quarter sort of threw three interceptions and almost blew the game away. And rookies like Tyler Johnson, man, that kid is special. He looked really, really good. And I think so did Leonard Fournette. Oh, he and Fournette had a good day. So you look at that. Yeah, Godwin had himself a day too. You can you can chalk it down to Matt Lafleur making a bad call, but at the end of the day, the Packers just didn't play well enough overall on offense to win the game. Wow. And I think that's what. Yeah, it, I think they started. 
I, I think that I think I, they started getting something going a little too late. Yeah, you got to They, gotta they, they were scoring. Season. The Bucks are still scoring too. The Bucks torched the, their defense the whole day. Yeah, you got to play a full sixty minutes of good football to beat Tom Brady in the playoff game. Yep. So, and like I was saying earlier, I think an important thing to say is that the Chiefs didn't peak because that game was not exciting. Uh, but the Listen, yeah, I, want, I, I took the Chiefs in that game, but still, I wish I saw. I wish it was a little more competitive than it was. The Bucks might have peaked, uh, and now the one thing that takes this all this whole argument of the team peaking before the Super Bowl and throwing it out the window is you have Tom Brady on the team. It's not likely that they're going to peak after this game, but like if you had a young quarterback in there, it could be a completely different story. But it's Tom Brady, just. But just because it's this scenario, and I want people to realize how big a, uh, a deal it is if you win a close game in the NFC Championship game and you have all that momentum riding on you and you're hype as hell, that could end up – and you're playing a team that's not really hype, but, like, you made, they made the Super Bowl and they expect that from themselves, that could end up being a, a recipe for disaster for the team that's all hype. Yep. Because they might have had, as my mom likes to say, they might have had their Super Bowl too early. But, man, Tampa gets to play a home playoff game. It's Brady versus Mahomes. We, who knows? In 15 years, we could look back at this game and say, this is why Brady's the GOAT or this is why Mahomes is the GOAT, depending on who wins the game. In, so, my, opinion, in my opinion, if Mahomes is going to try to be the GOAT, he has to win this game. You have if to he, win this game. If he's going to try to do what Brady did winning that much Super Bowl, he needs to win this Super Bowl. If he's going to be talk, if he's gonna be the talks about being the next GOAT, he has to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, if Mahomes wins this, it's officially the passing of the torch. And I want to point out something. Leonard Fournette went from Jacksonville to the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers are in the Super Bowl. Le- Le'Veon Bell got cut midseason by the Jets and went to the Chiefs, and now he's in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. These two running backs quite literally went from the two worst teams in the NFL to the two best teams in the NFL. Yep. <laughs> That's just – um, Congratulate. Let's congratulate two. One former coach and – on the Buccaneers, one former coach and one former Jet, Steve McClendon and Todd Bowles. Todd Bowles, man. Uh, I'm very happy guy. for them. She, she, Steve McClendon's my guy, bro. He's cool as hell. I love Steve McClendon, bro. He was, yeah. a great, he was a great leader on the Jets. I miss him. And Todd Bowles, 10 and 6, Toddy. Man, it's good to see him finally. Great man. This. Great man, too. And let's give a shout out to, I think he's still in the NFL, Morris Claiborne, got Darren Lee, um, yep. Le'Veon Bell. They're making their Super Bowl appearances for Andre Roberts. Um, oh, no, 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 or no, Andre Roberts got bounced as he no, should have because he talked shit about the Jets after he signed with the Bills. Um, but yeah, apart from that, do you have any like early predictions? This isn't gonna stand, but early predictions for who wins this game? Um, I actually listen. I really think Patrick Mahomes is going to stop Tom Brady from getting his seventh ring. I think the Chiefs are going to end up winning this game 28-20. to 20. It's going to be a really, really good game, but I think the Chiefs are going to hold Brady from his seventh ring, and Mahomes gets his second straight ring, and they win this game 28-20. to 20. You know, I always say you don't bet against Tom Brady, and Tampa's at home. And I don't then- think you bet against Patrick Mahomes, though. And the matchup is just so bad for Kansas City. But you know what? Fuck it. The Chiefs drive down the field with a minute left, score a touchdown, tie the game up. They go to overtime, and it's the whole story. (laughs) In 2018 or 2019, when the Chiefs and Patriots played in the AFC Championship game, uh, Mahomes never took the field in overtime because the Chiefs defense couldn't get a stop. Nope. The Chiefs defense stops Tom Brady. The Chiefs go down, or they force a punt. They go down, kick the game-winning field goal. Chiefs win the Super Bowl, 34-31. <laughs> so that's going to do it for today's podcast. If you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications to both of our channels. I'll leave a link to his channel down below uh, um, if you can figure out how to do that. Anthony, you got anything to say to the um, – so, um, so- uh just 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 remember this um podcast is pro- our next podcast will probably be this friday it's, it's gonna switch around thursday and friday but we'll give you guys a lot of information about this so 
Um, so yeah, that's really it. Um, I hope you guys have a really uh, good week. Um, just stay in there, Jeff fans. We're getting there. Joe Douglas got a really good rebuild going on right now. So yeah, as Anthony said, we're getting there. It's almost that time again. Yep. Maybe we even make the playoffs. It's been a very long time. Yep. I doubt it, but maybe it's possible. Uh, once say? again, be sure to wait for the podcast on Friday. We're doing it. Yep. And we should have a lot more people in here. Although yep. this 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 did go pretty well uh, for two people. I think we dragged this on for a pretty good amount of time. So once again, thank you guys for watching. And let's get a Jets chant. J E T. Jets, 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 Jets. All right, we will see you guys later.